What's happening guys? Welcome to another Things to Know video. This week we're going to be talking about things to know in buying a Honda Africa Twin CRF1000L. As you can see this is my new baby. Uh, I've had her for a couple of months and done a couple upgrades on her so I think it's about time we do a Things to Know on this beauty. Uh, as most of you know, the Africa Twin uh, was brought back this year in 2016. First model year since the late 80s, uh, early 90s, uh, when they had the Africa Twin uh, 700, and I think they had a 650 too, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but they came back, and they came back strong in 2016. Uh, it's a 1,000cc bike. It is the epitome of a big adventure bike. Uh, and it's also a great competition for the uh, BMW GSs, the um, V-Strom, uh, those sorts of bikes, um, where it fits in kind of kind of its own niche, which is a good place for it to be because it's a big off-road bike. It's uh, it's not made for strictly street touring. It is made to go, um, you know, places. <laughs> I've tried to take it already places where, uh, you know, DRZs and WRs are are very happy. But uh, but this thing does extremely well, uh, even though it is big and it is heavy. Uh, it's my first kind of uh, foray into the adventure riding market. And and I've been extremely happy so far. I, I strongly recommend this bike. It's been great to me. Um, so let's get into some of the upgrades that I've done. Um, the first upgrade that I did that I'd like to start with is the crash bars. Now, you're going to notice a bit of a uh, consistency in the upgrades that I've done so far. Uh, all of them are going to be done by Givi, GV, however you want to say it, G-I-V-I. Um, they sell uh, their parts through Revzilla. Uh, I don't think they sell them directly. I, have, I didn't see anywhere to buy stuff on their website. But crash bars. The reason I went with the Givi crash bars is because both the uh, it comes with both the lower and the upper so the bottom crash bars are great um, SW Motec also makes some crash bars uh, but they only sell the, the lower they don't sell an upper so the problem with that is that if the bike falls over, it's going to land and hit here, but there's nothing to protect here or, or the fairing. Now this fairing is all one piece and it's very expensive to replace and it's actually really a pain to take off, which we'll get to later. Um, so for me, I wanted something with both lower and upper. Uh, now Tortec does make over, uh, upper and lower, but they don't make one important piece, which is this, this middle bracket right here which secures the upper crash bars to the lower crash bars um, they're both they both end up being mounted in the same place kind of sandwiched one on top of the other uh, each other and then bolted into the frame so they're very secure but the problem is if you end up with any kind of torquing that this piece is going to keep structural stability between the lower and the upper crash bars and this 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 piece is is hardcore um, so yeah that's that's the reason I went ahead and got those uh, they wrap all the way around the front of the bike so even <laughs> god forbid you do a flip or something i mean it's still going to be pretty protected um you know but they're they're crash bars they do what they're made to do so the next upgrade i want to show you guys are the panniers and top box these are the Givy Outback Trekkers. Uh, they are uh, completely made of aluminum. Uh, they do have some plastic on the edges just uh, you know, in case they get rubbed or whatnot. It's not going to damage the aluminum. Uh, these are, uh, as far as I can tell, the best of the best. Um, the reason that I got them is because uh, I didn't want soft bags on this bike. I am going to be doing, uh, again, Planning your choices and buying what you need according to those choices is a huge thing. So I bought the the hard top case or the hard top case and the hard panniers because I knew that I was going to be riding this bike to a place to camp or visit someone or whatever, taking this stuff off and then going and riding. 
So what I figured out is that uh, my wolf tail that you guys have seen plenty of times on my DRZ, Xena, it fits perfectly in this top case and then there's still room. So what I can do is I can pack up that top case, pack stuff all around it uh, with the wolf tail inside here, go camp, drop the hard cases, then put the wolf tail on the back of the bike so it's soft luggage on the, on the, on the, on the tail here and not have any problems. So it's, uh, that actually works out perfectly for me. Now, the second uh, thing that you need to be aware of when you get uh, panniers for the Africa Twin is the mounting setup. Now, the Givy Outback Trekker mounting setup is pretty freaking awesome. Uh, it's the Givy stuff, the directions and uh, how to install their stuff are pretty awful. Uh, but as long as you can kind of use context clues and figure out what is what with the pictures, you should be okay with everything except for the crash bars. <laughs> we'll get into that in another video. I'm going to have uh, setup videos for all this stuff as well. I've filmed them and just need to edit them and I'm lazy and haven't done that yet. But the mounting system on the Outback Trekkers is extremely rigid. Um, it's great. These things don't go anywhere. And I've ridden them up incredibly rocky trails, you know, fast, hard, and have had absolutely no problems whatsoever with them being loose or anything like that. Uh, one thing that you should know is for the top case, there is both there is both an adapter kit that you need to buy and the top plate. So what it does is the, the adapter kit bolts on to the, um, to the, I don't know, what do you call them? Like, oh crap handle, <laughs> the pillion, the pillion, uh, handles. Um, it comes, it comes back out a little bit towards the back and then that, uh, adapter kit bolts onto there and then the top plate bolts on to the adapter kit. Then you can go ahead and put the top box on. Just so you know, if you guys are buying uh, cases, don't don't buy just the top plate and the case. You're gonna be very disappointed when you can't mount it. So that's one thing to know. Uh, the next thing that I've done is I went ahead and I guess I should talk about some of the stuff that I got from the factory. Uh, on the Africa Twin from the factory, the best things that you can purchase from them are going to be the Honda center stand and the Honda 12 volt. Um, for me, since I'm a tall guy, I also got the tall windscreen. Not necessary. Uh, even for me, I probably could have done a mod where you put some um, washers in here and it pushes the, the uh, windscreen out like that so the, the wind goes up higher over you. But uh, I had already ordered it not knowing. So... Um, I left it and I'm actually extremely, extremely happy with the tall windscreen. Um, seen some people in the Africa Twin group uh, complaining about buffeting. I have had zero buffeting, uh, no issues whatsoever. This thing, even when I wear my camera on top of my helmet, the wind goes just right over the top of the camera. So me being 6'3", 6'2", 6'3"-ish, um, with the camera on top, that's another three or four inches at least, uh, the wind just travels right over and I have absolutely no problem with it. Uh, that is great. <laughs> the stock windscreen hit me like right about in the forehead. So it was just made things annoying and it would grab the, uh, it would grab the sunshade on the, the top of my, uh, icon variant. So there you go with that center stand center stand is amazing. And on these big bikes, these 500 pound bikes, you are absolutely going to want to have a center stand. What I do is I pull her into the garage, set her down with the kickstand so I can get off. Then immediately I put her up on the kick uh, on the center stand. Uh, that allows me to chain, uh, do, do chain maintenance, uh, clean and lube my chain. Super easy because it leaves the back wheel up in the air. Uh, even with the top cases on, if they're full, it tends to be rear heavy and not do that. But if they're, if they're pretty empty like they are today, then uh, it'll sit up just fine. And it's super easy to do once you get the, the hang of how to do it. Um, let's see, what was, the, what was the other thing? Oh, the 12 volt. So this has a 12 volt plug. And in that 12 volt plug, I have a regular um, two amp charger. And then I have uh, the RAM mount for my phone, which M Mr. Everide suggested, and this thing is perfect. Um, 
and I can go ahead and plug that in and boom, my phone charges the entire time that I'm out riding. And I have not taken this off in gnarly stuff and it stays in this thing just fine. It, uh, it scratches up the back of the case a little bit, but dude, I don't care. It's a $10 case. What do I care? As long as the phone's protected and it's okay. This, this style of Ram mount, go look at Everide's channel and you will, you will find a full review on this thing and where to get it. Uh, they sell it on Amazon. But, okay, so the 12 volt. The problem with the 12 volt is in order to install it, you have to take off the entire front fairing to run the wires. So the reason I say to get it done by Honda, even if the bike doesn't have it before you buy it, order it from Honda and include the installation into your financing if that's how you're doing it. Um, because it is a royal pain in the you know what to get this thing installed so i was really happy i didn't know that i didn't find that out until um until i was actually at the dealership picking up the bike and they were like well we got to order the part it'll be in just bring it back and they were like we're only going to charge you an hour and a half of labor to put it on they said the first one that they did took them over four hours to figure it out how to do it so so yeah, be aware of that. You want the 12 volt installed before, uh, beforehand. Um, the next thing I want to tell you guys about is the Gibby skid plate. Now, the factory skid plate is fine. It's good if you're just going to be doing um, light trails, um, uh, fire roads, that sort of thing. But if you're going to be getting into anything a little more gnarly, and if you live in Colorado, you know what I mean, those big loose rocks and where you're going to be uh, judging your ground clearance by the millimeter and not always getting the guess right, you want to get a good beefy skid plate. Now, this is the Givy Trekker Fender. It is... Um, I think it's like five millimeters thick and it's all made out of metal. It is all, I guess, I guess aluminum. I'm not hundred percent sure, but this thing is big. <laughs> it is big and it is hefty and it comes with its own mounting brackets. Now here's a suggestion that you're going to, that you're going to want if you're going to be buying the Givy stuff like I did. When you put on the crash bars, the crash bars require you to drop the exhaust, which seems daunting at first, but then you realize it's only held on by uh, four header bolts, one bolt in the middle, and one bolt up here that holds the can on. Um, it's easy once you figure it out, but it's a pain in the butt until you do. The thing is, in order to install the lower crash bars and the skid plate, both, you have to drop the exhaust. So I suggest if you're gonna do those two modifications, do them at the same time. Buy all this stuff at once, kit your bike out, put it all back together, then be happy. <laughs> I didn't do that. <laughs> I'm glad I can make some of these mistakes for you guys before you guys have to make them and waste your time. Uh, I didn't do that. Hermit came down and helped me put on the crash bars. Big thank you to Mr. Hermit to vlog. Go check out his channel. Um, we got the we got the upper and lower crash bars installed. He takes off for the night. I'm super happy. My skid plate comes in the next day and I'm like, all right, man, just going to run out and bolt on the skid plate like I did on Xena, you know, Duval, just old one off, new one on, done, right? No, not, not done. <laughs> it's not how it works. It has its own bracket that mounts um, along with, again, the brackets for the lower crash bars. They mount in the same place to go to the frame and they give you bolts that work with both. So... There you go. You don't have to buy separate hardware if you have everything. Um, you have to drop the exhaust to get to those bolts. So drop the exhaust, put the bracket on. I mean, it took me an hour or two and zip, 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 all done. Uh, and I've been perfectly happy with it since. I mean, I've, uh, I've narred it up a little bit already um, going up. Um, uh, St. Mary's Glacier area uh, on some big rocks and the thing that you have to realize with this even though it is an adventure bike and it does have great gr ground clearance it's still lower than Xena um, and I have gotten so used to exactly how high Xena is when I ride over big rocks that I need to remember when I ride this that this is a few inches lower uh, it has a few inches less ground clearance so I have to really keep that in my mind in order not to hit something and 
stop myself suddenly. <laughs> it's not the going that kills you, it's the sudden stopping. <laughs> so I've been uh, been taking it easy with that and, uh, you know, kind of getting a feel for it now that I've got all the proper protection uh, on and set up and uh, I've been riding her on some harder stuff and I'm really happy with her. Now, the last thing that I want to tell you guys about uh, is actually, I think what I started the very first things to know when buying a DRZ with is tires. So again, continuing on with the concept of being honest with yourself about what you're going to do when you ride the bike, you want to take that into buying tires and tire choice. So the reason, uh, the tires that I selected are the um, Midas E07s. They are a 50-50 tire, however, the rear tire seems to be gauged a little bit more towards dirt. It's got some big knobs, however, on the road, the entire set, these tires, are perfect. There is no noise, no vibration, they just cruise down the highway at 75 miles an hour without any issue whatsoever. Now, when you get into the dirt, you're gonna notice that the front tire is not nearly as aggressive as the rear tire. So what I'm probably gonna end up doing next time, and I haven't, I haven't made a, uh, you know, uh, you know, 100% decision on this yet, but it's what I'm leaning towards, is getting the E09 front and the E07 rear. Now, the reason that I went with the E07s is because they are 50-50 tire, and I knew that I was going to be putting a lot of highway miles on this bike. I want to go far. You know, that's that was what I wanted to do. I, you know, I want to be able to ride to Wyoming. I want to be able to ride to Moab or St. George to visit Tyler. Um, just have to be honest when you when you think about that. And riding on D606s to, to St. George, Utah would be an awful, awful experience. I mean, you would just completely shred the tires and um, you would completely vibrate yourself out of your skull. Um, so yeah, again, with that be honest with yourself thing, that is the, the biggest favor that you can do yourself uh, when you buy one of these bikes, when you buy any bike. As long as you know exactly what you're going into and you're prepared, you're gonna love it. So, the front, it works. It's okay. It does fine in the rocks and stuff. My problem with it is when things get slippery, like when you're in the pea gravel, uh, when you're in uh, sand and whatnot, it just doesn't have as much grip as the rear does. So you find the front washing out a little bit. So I've taken to dropping the air pressure down. Uh, I've done 25-25 front and rear, uh, and they seem to be absolutely fine. Oh, I should specify, these are the Dakar version. So they have an extra ply in the tire itself, uh, which makes them thicker and more durable than just the regular Midas E07s. Uh, I got those because we have a lot of sharp rocks here in the Rocky Mountains, ha ha ha. Uh, and it's done me well. Uh, as long as you don't encounter two screws like I did, you won't, you won't have any issues with flats. <laughs> oh man. <clears throat> So, as soon as I burn this front off, I'll probably end up getting get something a little bit more uh, aggressive for that guy. But I am extremely, extremely happy with the rear. Um, if it's going to last 10,000 miles, like people are saying that they're going to, uh, this, this set of tires, uh, I'm going to be incredibly impressed. Um, because I go through a set of D606s on Xena almost per season. Um, but that's great because they offer amazing traction and you know that's what I what I want when I'm out riding trails and gnarly stuff is a lot of traction. But for the gnarly stuff that I've put these through, they've done extremely well. Um, so yeah, definitely, definitely recommend them if you're gonna be doing adventure touring. Um, they're great. And uh, you know, I'm gonna continue to ride that front and um, you know, just, just gotta take it a little bit easier on the corners, you know, the fast corners. Uh, when you lay it over, the side knobs <laughs> aren't like the D606, so you just gotta watch out. <clears throat> Lower your tire pressure, take the corners a little easier, and you'll be just fine. Um, they seem like they are great tires and they have a great reputation. The next thing that I want to talk to you guys about is traction control and ABS on this bike. This bike comes stock with both, regardless of what version you get, the DTC or the manual. DTC stands for uh, dual clutch transmission. Um, and that basically just gives you no, no clutch, it's just like driving an automatic car. You just turn the throttle and away it goes and it shifts for you. Um, but the traction control and ABS, for me, are kind of a problem. 
a problem and a savior. The traction control, as soon as you get off, as soon as I get off road, I turn it off immediately. I don't want it cutting power to the rear tire. I want the bike to respond when I give it an input. I want it to do what I want it to do, and I don't want any shady changes. <laughs> Nothing. Um, so that has worked perfectly for me. I've tried out all three modes, uh, one, two, and three, and one, one is the best, but still, I just, I don't see any need for it. Uh, it's just getting in the way of my connection to the bike and how I feel like the bike is responding to what I'm doing and how I should be responding to what the bike is doing. And when you get in, involved in that, you know, communication, it's, it's like a sixth sense. Um, you start throwing monkeys in the wrench or monkeys in the work, blah, 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 wrenches in the works. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you can end up crashing and getting hurt. And I just, I don't, I don't like it. And all these big bikes have it. Uh, the ABS, I use the ABS on, uh, pavement. Um, it has already saved me once when I, <laughs> I didn't see that a, a hay truck was turning and, uh, he slowed down suddenly and, it really saved my bacon. I had both the front and the rear locked up. Luckily, we were only doing about 25 miles an hour, but I stopped on a freaking dime. <laughs> like, I stopped. But, uh, but yeah, off-road, again with the ABS, um, I notice that uh, when you turn it off, it only turns it off to the rear wheel. It always stays on to the front wheel. But with the rear wheel, uh, if you're riding down one of these dirt roads and you're in a, a little bit of gravelly patch, if you go to hit that rear brake, even just to slow down for a corner, it'll kick in and it won't slow you down. Like that's, that's been my personal experience with it. Like <laughs> it just kind of like takes away your brakes and that's, I mean, that other people might have a better explanation as to why I feel that, but that's how I feel and that's what's happened to me. So I just turn it off and uh, it's fine. Now, that being said, it's always on for the front brake. And I have had no problems with that whatsoever. Yeah, the front brake, um, the ABS isn't nearly as dramatic. So the front brake will let you get a lot more grip before it kicks in, which is a great thing. And I'm happy for that. Um, and, it, and it works well. Uh, like I said, I haven't had any problems with it. I'm, I'm happy with the front ABS. Uh, the rear ABS, I just, I don't, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it in the dirt at all. Uh, I will be doing a full video for you guys to show you exactly how the um, all three traction control mo uh, modes work and how the ABS works, uh, both on and off road, I plan. Um, so be looking for that coming up soon. The last thing that I have done to this bike, which is something you need and it's really obnoxious, the kickstand. <laughs> the kickstand is great. It is the perfect length. No KLR issues here. However, the kickstand, the base of the kickstand, far, far, far too narrow. So if you come up to a spot like we're in today where it's snow and mud and ice, you put that kickstand down, this bike just sinks without even uh, panniers, any weight, extra weight on it, it just sinks. And it's, it sucks. I think this is a, a slight modification that Honda could make that would improve <laughs> something very simple, very drastically. Uh, so what I ended up doing was, um, let's see, what brand did I even buy? I don't even remember. Oh, I actually, so I bought the SW Motec uh, kickstand extender. Basically what it is, is a little doohickey, and I'll, I'll get video for you guys to see right now. It just slides over the top of the kickstand, bolts down, and it gives you a much wider foot to, to lean the bike over on, and then you don't have that sinking down, and it's perfect. Ever since I changed it, or ever since I put that thing on there, it has been top-notch clutch. Uh, I've, I've had it in pea gravel and sand and everything else that you can imagine, and it's just been great. All right, guys, I appreciate you tuning in for another Things to Know video. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope this helped you guys out a bit. Uh, in future videos, I mean, I still do have some stuff that I want to do to this bike, uh, the Bark Busters, Bar Risers, uh, certain things, but uh, stuff for these adventure bikes is expensive, so I'm going to have to do it in steps. And uh, so far, I've gotten the most important to me things done, and uh, I am incredibly incredibly happy with this bike and uh 
very thankful for Honda for, for putting this back out in 2016. Uh, Honda, you did a great job. Um, and as a year one bike, people always say, don't buy a year one bike because it's going to have some type of cork or something that they're going to fix in year two. But as a year one bike, I haven't had any problems whatsoever. This thing hasn't been back to the dealership uh, since I bought it. Um, you know, did the the uh, 600 mile break in oil change and I have just been jamming on it since and and I absolutely love it and I feel like I'm uh I feel like a a bad father <laughs> a bad a bad lover <laughs> wow that's horrible <clears throat> I feel kind of bad for Xena because uh I'm not riding her as much. Um, you know, I've tried to get her out a couple of times, but you know, I've got a new toy, so I'm going to take it out and, uh, and play with it as much as I possibly can. But, uh, all right guys, I hope you all have a great week. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for sticking around. Please subscribe, give it a thumbs up, check out the CDS Facebook page. Uh, there's pictures every week, uh, every week that I go ride, which is every week. <laughs> <laughs> from great places in Colorado. The Facebook page is uh, Colorado Dual Sport, all one word, facebook.com slash Colorado Dual Sport, all one word. So throw us a like there. If you guys want to chat with me or have any questions, um, best way to get in touch with me is through Facebook messages uh, or comments on the, the Facebook posts. Uh, I do read YouTube comments, but um, you know it's a little easier for me to, to access the Facebook stuff, and I'm constantly looking at that anyway because I'm an IT guy. <laughs> And that's what I do. Um, but yeah, we'll catch y'all later. Peace.